Pod Jack Episode 9, The Lone Wolf. Recording this at home. I'm going to try to. If you hear this episode, that means I was able to do it without being interrupted. And pretty much, this is the first one I've done at home in a while. I've been doing them out, out and about, as you would say, because I've been working and I just can't get any time at home, really. So, I've been doing them on Saturday nights. The last two I was drinking. You know, let's get to it. So, I heard a guy on a radio show once say that all these, you know, some guys try to say, oh, I'm the lone wolf and everything, and really they're losers. And there is some truth to that. Sometimes you don't want to be a lone wolf. And the truth is, I never wanted to be a lone wolf. I always wanted a regular life. Now, I never... I once again I never wanted the girlfriend I never wanted the relationship but you know I wanted to work I wanted to go to school I wanted to keep busy and I wanted to have friends very important for me to have friends and I already talked about friendship in many episodes before so I'm not going to go over the same boring stuff but how it first started to happen when I realized you know I went I remember I went to the movies once even when I was a kid I was like 20 I was super bad came out I don't know if you guys remember the movie Super Bad, and I wanted to see it, and I was like, "Man, I feel like a loser going to the theaters by myself." So I went, and at first I was sitting there and I'm eating my popcorn and stuff, or maybe I didn't even have popcorn. And I remember going, and I was like, "Man, people, people are probably looking at me like you're a little bit." I realized no one's looking at me, nobody cares, and I'm never going to see these people again. So I watched the movie and I had a good time, and I remember thinking that wasn't bad. Even though at the beginning I was like, what the fuck am I doing? Who the fuck goes to the movies by theirself? Then uh, I told you about how the first time I went to a nightclub, I, was, I used to be friends with that douchebag. He used to call me his best friend I talked about. When I told him, he was jealous. I was like, yeah, I went by myself. He's like, you went by yourself? How could you do that? You could have got hurt. Oh my God. Well, I wasn't. I said it was fun. I went, I talked to some girls, and I left. So I realized, so I told you about the whole chat room thing. Um... I I tried everything to avoid being a loner. I told you I went to chat rooms for two years now. There was a few guys on there that I used to talk to too. They were like, hey, we can hang out. But I felt weird about meeting dudes online. But most of them were far away anyways. Like I said, they were in bumfuck bumfuck PA. You know, all over the place. There's all these crazy PAs, Pennsylvanias, where it's hours away from Philly where I live and I have no car so I couldn't meet them anyways same thing with the girls they weren't interested in me then after the chat room I gave that up I started doing the whole PUA thing I was 21 22 I was old enough to go to bars and I started doing the whole PUA thing and you know I can go up by myself to do PUA because as I said I never had a problem approaching approaching was always my strong point it's easy for me to approach I'm, I'm fearless but, you know, you still feel weird going out by yourself sometimes, but I would just approach girls, and it was pretty cool. And then, I, of course, when I started meeting these wingmen, I remember, as I said before, I tried using Craigslist when I was 23. And the first dude I met online was like a wingman for, for, for game, PUA. He was a weird guy, and I remember hanging out with him. But I, it, the thing is, every single time I ever hung out with a PUA guy, I knew they weren't my friend. It's so weird hanging out with those guys, because you're like, I know this guy's not my friend. And when you just meet them, you know, you got to say to girls, okay, what do we tell the girls if they ask how we know each other? And, you know, you got to lie. Like, oh, this is my buddy from work. Oh, this is my cousin. You know, you lie because you just met each other. It's so weird. Because you just, you don't feel, like, I don't feel anything. When I hang out with these guys, when I used to, I used to never feel anything. Like, I'm not saying you're, like, emotionally, like, gay, you know. But, I mean, like, you know, you don't feel like I know this person. This is some random dude. But, you know, you would go out and you would, you know, I knew the whole time the guy was using me to get laid. But I was like, okay. So I would say if anybody's listening to this and you're new to being a loner, you're new to being a quote unquote lone wolf, it's going to be hard for you. It takes many years. I'm not going to say of of uh, practice, but it takes a a long time for you to ever get, I don't think you ever really get used to it, but for you to get numb to it, let's say, the feeling of numbness, you don't feel it, uh, for the most part, it's going to take a while. 
But in the beginning, it fucking sucked. I was like, this sucks. I was like, why do I have to meet people on Craigslist? Why do I, you know, why do I have to do this whole PUA thing? Why can't I just have regular friends? And I remember... I remember it still to this day when I used to go to bars. When I was, when I was, I was so, je- I'm still jealous of people. When I see people hanging out in groups and stuff, I go, "Why can't that be me? Why? Why can't that be me? Why can't I? I don't need like fifty friends or thirty or twenty, even three people or even two. I go, if I went to a better high school and I met better people, maybe. And as I said, college before my parents even wanted me to go, like, go to college. All he ever cared about. My parents don't care if I'm happy. They don't care if I'm miserable. They don't give a fuck. All they care about is get a job. Get a job. That's all they care about. That, that's the answer to everything in life. And yeah, you got to have work and stuff. But it's like, that's it. Just get a job. Then you'll be happy. Yeah, okay. And I remember when in my early years, I used to really care about... I used to really care about trying to make friends at work. But then I just gave up on it. I was like, I'm never going to make friends at work. I just I stopped in my early 20s. I just asked people for their number. And I, I hung out. The first time I hung out with someone at work, I was 20 years old. I was working at CVS. And this dude who worked in the pharmacy, he randomly asked me to hang out. Now, what he didn't know is my parents were, like, overprotective and shit. And, like, you know, at this, even at that point, I was out of high school. They still were acting that way. And he asked me to hang out one night. He said, I'm going to a party tonight. And he didn't realize I was very introverted. And i never been to a party. See, he always went to parties and stuff. And, you know, he had a regular life. So when I hung out, I was very quiet. And he was like, what's wrong? And I said, nothing. I just, I don't even know you. And I'm hanging out with you. And I'm just, I, it takes me a little bit to get to know the people. And so I can tell that turned him off. But, you know, it didn't matter. He dropped me home. And I remember just being like, you know, it was pretty cool. But I, I never made friends at work. I used to really care in my early 20s. Like, I got to make friends at work. And I used to ask people for their number. And then finally, I just gave up. And... Like I said, in the in the beginning, it really fucking sucks, man. It really does, especially when you're young, you know, like you're younger, you know, early twenties, especially, you know, you, like you, you need friends in life. I mean, you don't need them, need them, but you kind of do. I mean, you need people just to be around. If it's like like me, like comedy, like stand up comedy, when I started stand up when I was twenty three, I remember thinking, why can't we hang out outside of comedy? You know, and then I figured out that we have a regular, we have our own lives. That's why I use the term comedy friends. And I have hung out with comedians outside of comedy before, but for the most part, we just uh, we hang out as uh, you know at the clubs, at the open mics and stuff. That's what we do. It's mostly networking. But you know, I went bowling for the first time with two guys. One of them I hang out with once in a while. The other one we never hung out before outside of comedy. And it was fun. It was fun. We did. We did it. We did like a video out of it, but it was fun. We had some drinks and some tacos, and it was fucking fun. And I was like, I want to do more of that, but it only happens once. I would say once every other year, maybe I'll hang out with like a comedian outside of comedy, which is like fine. We don't have to push the type of relationship we have. If it's just comedy, then it's just comedy. So. You know, I remember, you know, doing stand-up, thinking, oh, maybe we could be friends. I can make friends out of this. And then it took me years to realize, oh, I get it. Wait, I'm never going to make friends out of this. But I was fine with that, though. I said, hey, that's cool. We can just hang out here. That's fine. So, I mean, you know, my parents, like I said, I, I mean, I wish I went to a good college. And, you know, it, actually, I don't wish because I don't owe anything. As I said, that's the only good thing about my life is I'm not in debt. And I know some people that are, I know two guys who are five years older than me. They're almost 40 years old. They still live at home, both of them. And they both are in debt. They both owe over $10,000. So I'm grateful for that. Not to make fun of those two guys. I'm just saying I'm grateful for that. Because at least I don't owe anything, you know. But if I went to a better college, or, I mean, I don't want to owe any money. I was like, I, I, or, or if I just made some friends, I'm like, that would have been great. So I, I try to avoid it the whole lone wolf thing for so long for so long and as i said i really gave a fuck now anybody who says they don't give a fuck is lying you all we all, we all give a fuck at least a little bit because the people who really don't give a fuck are the people who end up in jail because they're mentally ill they lose their mind and they snap 
and they don't give a fuck and they kill somebody or they do some sort of crazy mass shooting or something. That's the people who really don't give a fuck. They're the ones who are really crazy. But most of us, we care a little bit. So I, in the beginning, I really care. I was like, I got to make friends. I, I was going to meetup groups. Now, for those who know, meetup.com, it's exactly what the name is, meetup. You can meet people, but they don't want to hang out with you. They, they claim they do. Some people might get your number, but for the most part, they just want to hang out in the moment. And I realized people just use people like a commercial in their life. And it sucks. It really fucking does. So I went. I tried meetup groups. And I hung out with some people. We played some games. Had some drinks. But they don't want to hang out with you. They don't want to hang out with me. They don't want to exchange numbers. And go let's hang out sometime. So like I said. Still to this day. When I go out to bars and stuff. I look at groups of people. It's not a lot. Even to this day. Sometimes I feel empty. I'm like. Why can't that be me? I don't need 50 friends. Just even two. And I can text people. And hit them up. But as I said. And that's my next point I want to get to. The reason why I don't text people anymore is because every single time I text people, they always have an excuse. They're always like, oh, I was going to text you back. Just like the asshole guy I was talking about earlier, the one that called me his best friend. He always ignored me. When everyone else texted him, he texted back. When I would, But I was so-called best friend, he would always ignore me. He'd be like, oh, I was going to text you back, but I figured you were sleeping. First of all, asshole, I'm unemployed. And I go to bed 4 in the morning. I text you at 10 o'clock at night. You thought I was sleeping? Yeah, right. And I realized when people need something from you, they're texting you. But when you text them, they're always like, Oh, hey, man. You know, I was going to... And then they lie. I go, what happened to my text message? They go, what text message? I go, really, dude? You're going to sit there and lie and text you. Oh, wait, let me check. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I got it now. Like, you got it. Yeah. Oh, I was going to text you back and then make up some lie. It's like, fuck, man. People just treat you, like I said, like you're a commercial in their life. That's how people, especially me, because I'm not cool. And as I said before, it's all about value. That's what friendship is. It's value. Now, most people would say, if you ask most people, what do you prefer? Loyalty or value? Most people will say loyalty, but the absolute truth is most people prefer value. What can you do for me? What do you bring into the table? Why should I be friends with you? You know, do you have a car to drive me around? Do you do you have girls to hook me up with? Do you have a cool lifestyle? Do you have some sort of thing you can, you know, do for me to make me happy? Drugs, uh, anything, a weed dealer? What can you do for me? And if you don't have that, then you're useless. And it takes a long time to figure that out. So as I said before, it really sucks in the beginning being a lone wolf. Now, what turned it around for me was when I was 25, I was still in college. Sorry, when I was in 23, I was two years in and I got this government job. Not the one I'm working now, a different one. And I couldn't believe it because I couldn't even get a job. It took me a year. Like for, I was unemployed for so long. I couldn't even afford books anymore. I was fighting with my mom. She didn't want to help me with school. She wanted to spend her money on lottery. She didn't want to help me. And she's like, hey, you're taking all my money. I was like, $40? You can't give me $40 every two weeks? God, like you're supposed to help your kids go to college. Don't you want me to get a good job? Oh, yeah, you're taking all my money. I'm like, what the fuck? I have the most, I, I'm, the, I'm the only parents in the world that don't want to have their kids, get, you know, go to school. But they want me to get a job. That makes sense, right, everybody? So I was fighting with them, and I, I remember I had a job interview at this shitty place. It was called H.H. H. Gregg. It was an electronics store. They only paid like eight something an hour. I was supposed to work in the back pulling out TVs. I had two interviews with them. They didn't hire me. So I was like, fuck, I was unemployed for almost two years. I had no fucking money. I was in school. I was eating like a dollar bag of chips for lunch. I had nothing. And then the girl I was friends with, the only nice thing she ever did for me, the only thing that came good out of her friendship was she got me this government job, which I didn't think was possible. I said, there's no way I'm going to make 14 something an hour. I can't even get a job making, you know, seven bucks an hour. And I got it. It took a month of paperwork and everything. I got it. And then when I started making money, I stopped giving a fuck. Like, I, I gave a fuck a little bit. I still felt like, you know, like I'm lonely and I want friends. But I was making money. 
my clothes used to be raggedy. I used to wear like fucking like, you know, like sports shirts, like shitty model sports shirts to bars and stuff and clubs like flannel shirts. I had no money. I was broke. I was able to get because people were telling me even back then, just like you guys, you got to dress better, man. I was like, I don't have any money. I don't have any money to fucking dress. You need money to dress good. I don't have money. So I wasn't buying like expensive clothes when I started buying dress shirts, uh, suit jackets. I was even wearing ties to bars like a fucking asshole. Not like expensive ties, but you know, like shitty little ties, fucking dress shoes. If I was going to like a salsa bar or something or a fancy place. And one of the best things about it was back then, most places didn't have a cover. So I used to go out and spend no fucking money. I remember I was hanging out in Center City one night. I hit up 10 spots. I didn't spend a fucking dime. I didn't spend a fucking dime. I hit up 10 spots. I would just walk into a bar, hit up some hoes, leave, go to the next place, leave at 2 a.m., get home. And I was like, I didn't spend a fucking dime. Amazing. It was that easy. Nowadays, almost every fucking place has a fucking cover in Center City. If you hang out on a Friday or Saturday night, except for like two places that don't, it's ridiculous. So it was like, so I stopped giving a fuck. I still give a fuck a little bit, like I said. And then I was still meeting these dudes, these wingmen, whatever. But I remember thinking, like, I got a good job now, stacking up money. And money's not everything, but I just felt like, you know, like I have a job, you know. And w- I will say this. When you're, another thing about lone wolf is, lone wolfing or the lone wolf theory, whatever, is if you got nothing going on, it fucking sucks. It fucking sucks. Like, if you're not working and you're not in school or both, and you live at home with your parents especially, and you got no friends, oh my god, you're like, I, that's why I had suicidal thoughts. I was like, I should just fucking kill myself. Like, what kind of life is this? What kind of fucking life is this? What is the fucking point of living? There's no fucking point. This is most people have a life. I don't have a life. Even still, this day I don't. But I just learned to not give a fuck anymore. I just accepted it. I didn't want to accept it back then. So when I was working and going to school for the first time in my life, I was so fucking happy. It was. I feel like the best years of my life when I was 25 to 28. I was in school. I was working. I was barely home. I was still doing PUA, but I was out. I was I, I would do comedy Wednesday nights. Thursday I had the day off because I was a student temp. I would do day game twice, go out Friday, Saturday nights. Then, you know, I started going to the gym and shit. You know, and I, I was just so, I, I was busy. I was actually busy. I was barely home. And those were, the, I wouldn't say the best years of my life. Like, it was great. I was still a loser. I still wasn't getting laid. I still didn't really, I, I had some friends, but still didn't hang out with people. But as far as just being busy and just, you know, uh, yeah, man, I really didn't give a fuck. And then, you know, I lost my my job. I had a car. I lost my car. And I went right back to square one again. No job, no car, no money, no friends, no nothing. Living in the basement. And once again, that's when depression started. But when you have things going on, it's easy to be a lone wolf. Easier. Because you're like, I got money. I got a fucking, you know, I got, you know, I got a fucking, so I'm going to school and stuff. You know, you're busy. Great. If you got nothing going on, it fucking sucks. You're like, this fucking sucks. So my advice to anybody out there listening is if you're new to being a lone wolf, it's going to suck. It might take you years and years to, like I said, to get even kind of used to it. And even when you get used to it, you're still going to feel that empty void. Like you see people hanging out like, why can't that be me? You know? But the benefits to being a lone wolf is once again is I still to this day don't even text people for shit. Like I text a comedian once in a while to say, hey, you want to do a podcast, you know, or or something like that. But for the most part, I leave people alone because as I said before, I already know as soon as I start texting them, they're going to ignore me and they're going to say, oh, I didn't get your message and all that shit. And I start thinking like, fuck this person, you know, they're a piece of shit. They fucking hate me. So... I, I'm, like I said, I'm one of the few guys that I still go out by myself. Everything I do is still by myself. I still go to bars and shit by myself. Only on, only on Saturday nights. I stop going out Friday nights. I don't have the energy anymore. And I still fucking... I don't go to movies or anything, but I should. I should just go to a fucking movie by myself. I haven't done that in a while. 
but there's no you know once again it's it, there's only so much you can do so it's all about value and it's all you have to be as I said if you really want to make the most friends in life you have to be the kind of friend they want you to be if you're not the kind of friend they don't want you to be people are going to hang out with you you got to be their bitch you got to be like what can I do well how should I how should I act like you're you're like, like you're their lackey and one of the things people don't like about me is I stand up to people. Like, like if I text you once, you don't text back, all right. But if I text you twice, and I'm not talking about in a row. I'm talking about, let's say, a different time. Let's say a month later or something. And you, you know what I mean? Then I'm just going to call you out. I'm like, hey, man, are you done with me? Are you mad at me? What, what's going on? And people don't like that. They go, oh, what's your problem, man? I go, look, if you, I, don't, I, I wouldn't ignore you. I don't expect you to text me back right away. Okay, if you're busy, fine, but... I guarantee if this person texts you, even guys that used to hang out with, I go, I guarantee if a girl texts you, they go, oh, that's different. Oh, so you mean you saw my message, but you ignored me. But if you're, oh, okay. Oh, that you're, you're a real bro, man. So, end of the day, I'm not good with people. Uh, forget about girls. I'm just not good with people in general. Because, you, you know, people say be yourself. Let's be honest. Being yourself does not fucking work. If you be yourself, you end up like me. <laughs> With nothing. But I'm going to cut it right here. Uh, thanks, guys, for watching. And uh, I, keep telling, I keep telling myself I'm running out of ideas. But I'm able to bang on an episode every week. So every single... every uh, In the middle of the week, I think, what could the next episode be? I don't even have anything. Maybe I'll wait another week and then I just fucking start talking. And I talk to myself because I'm crazy. Like right now I'm talking to the recorder so you guys can hear it. But I actually talk to myself. I have conversations with myself. And once in a while my mom will hear me go, who are you talking to? And I go, I'm talking to myself. She goes, oh my God. I go, well, who am I going to talk to? You? You don't want to fucking talk to me. Nobody wants to fucking talk to me. You know. So anyways, another episode banged out of my ass out of nowhere. And we'll see how long we can keep this thing going. But the feedback's been pretty good. And uh, for all the lone wolves out there, keep on lone wolfing. As I said, it does suck at times, but there's benefits to it too. And sometimes you got no choice. Go MGTOW bros. See ya. You all just got fucking jacked again.